Hey, what's up, Roddy? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, I want to take a look at Boomy the Boombox. If you want to learn more about Boomy, you can check out my learning guide on the Adafruit Learning System. You can find out all about how to 3D print yours and build your own. In today's tutorial, I want to take about, uh, I want to talk about a little bit of the process uh, that I took to make Boomy. So the first thing I want to talk about is using SVG graphics. So these are vector graphics that were designed by Bruce Yan, who's our creative director at Adafruit, and he designed all of our Circuit Playground characters. Uh, so this is a vector graphics editing program called Adobe Illustrator, and there's a lot of different uh, vector graphic applications. And the main thing you want to know is to export your graphics as an SVG. So an SVG contains all the vector data that Fusion can read. Uh, the first tip I want to have, however, is to kind of set up your document in the right way. So you can see Boomi's in the center of the document, but really what we want to have Boomi is kind of in the origin or it's close to it. So in vector graphics land, uh, the origin here is at the center at zero, 00. So we actually want to have Boomi over there, not in the center. And I'll show you what happens. So in a new document, in order to get uh, the SVG graphics in here, all we got to do is create a new, well, go up here and insert insert SVG. We need to select a plane. I'm going to pick this bottom one. Then we need to select the file by clicking on the folder icon. I'm going to search for my SVG over here. So here's Boomi. You can see he's in the center. I'm going to hit open. And this is why you want to have Boomi close to uh, the 00, zero on corner, the left corner, left top corner. I don't see Boomi, but if you zoom out, there he is right there. So that's the first tip. You really want to have your graphics up there. The next thing I want to talk about is scaling. So scaling in Fusion 360 and using SVGs isn't actually one-to-one. -one. Here's an example. So I'm going to make another SVG, and this time I have a simple 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter square. So when I open that in, I do see it up here. It's in the right. It looks like it's right. I'm going to hit OK. But if I select on one of these edges, click on them, you can see the length of it is actually 7.488 not quite 10 millimeters. So just note that if you're trying to do something that needs to be exactly correct uh, in another vector editing graphics program, and you bring those into Fusion 360, they're not going to be uh, kind of what you expect. So I only recommend using SVGs for reference or very, very detailed things. You can't really scale uh, these things. If you want to modify your existing things, if you just have to modify it, the best way to do so is to unlock the sketches. So I'm going to go into this sketch. And basically what you do is, let's say I want to modify this. Um, well, you can see that the circles aren't even really circles or individual lines. So let's say we want to do, I guess, this one here. So if you want to do this little square, um, I can select it. Probably this way is better, this marquee selection here. And then over here, just make sure to click on one of the constraints, the fix or unfix, and that'll turn the green into blue, hopefully. Um, hmm, doesn't look like it did it. Working with SVGs is very, uh, very finicky. Uh, in, some in some cases, I was able to unfix something, and I was able to apply a sketch dimension. But as you can see right now, it's kind of not working. There we go. There's our sketch dimension. It's also very kind of sluggish to work with, but you can kind of do it. it. I don't recommend doing it. So in this project, I just kind of use this as a reference, really. Uh, I didn't actually use any of these paths, any of these sketches, because it's just kind of cluttered and um, very, very slow. Just to select them all is, a, is kind of slow. So I don't recommend doing that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of building uh, some of the features uh, of Boomi's face. So the first thing I want to talk about uh, on Boomi's face is these lines here. Do you see these? this line that kind of runs across the top here and two lines across here and then two lines over here that kind of uh, encompass the mouth here? To make these, it, you might think, you know, that's pretty easy. You just make some squares. But I found kind of an interesting way uh, to do it. So let me show you the sketch. So here's the main sketch that kind of builds Boomy's face. You can kind of get an idea. These are the eyes. Uh, there's a central midpoint construction plane, or like a construction line going on around here, just to do some mirroring for the eyes. And you'll see that the uh, the the segments that break up uh, Boomy's face here, they're actually just single lines. They're not squares. So how did I get squares there? 
I actually use something called the pipe feature. So if you go under create, you can see this thing called a pipe feature. The pipe feature is a lot like the sweep feature. If you roll over the sweep feature, you can see kind of what it does. But the, the sweep needs two things. It needs one profile sketch and then a line or a path to, to kind of sweep that profile across. So that's what sweep does. The pipe, however, doesn't need a profile. It makes its own profile. So it just needs a path to guide. So let's take let's double click on one of these uh, one of these pipes and take a look at what it's doing. So if we take a look here at the side, you can see um, that it's the blue line here is the path that I drew inside the sketch, and this square here is just generated by the section. So if we look at edit feature, you can see the kind of things we can do. The distance is set to one, but if you wanted half of that, you would put 0.5 or you can manipulate the, um, the handler here as well. You can see how that's updating the distance there. So we're going to keep that at one because we want to encompass the whole path. The next thing is you can modify this guy, which is the section size. So as I uh, play with this, the section size increases. You have, the op you have the option to change the shape. So if I wanted to make a circle, I could do that, or a triangle. Another thing you could do with the pipe is actually make it hollow. So if you want to make it hollow, you can do that. You can tell it how thick you want it. So this is a really quick and easy way to kind of make these features. Um, you have, of course, the option to make it a join or a cut or a complete new body. It's all up to you. Uh, one, though, limitation kind of thing is that I couldn't do double things. I can't select multiple paths. It only use one path per one pipe feature. So you can see in my guide, in my timeline here, I have five different pipes, and it looks a little bit, um, I wish I could do this with just one pipe, but uh, I think it's easier to do this, because if I had extrusions and stuff, maybe I would just have one extrusion and that would be it. Um, so if you're cool with having a couple extra things in your uh, <laughs> in your timeline, then you should be fine. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I haven't used pipes, the pipe tool, uh, in any other projects yet, and I think that was a kind of neat way to use it. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is actually Boomy's mouth. So how did I come up with Boomy's mouth? It looks pretty straightforward and simple, but it was a little bit of learning for myself here. So let's go into the actual sketch that makes Boomy's mouth. I'm going to pull it up here. I have another tip, I guess, is to break out features into individual sketches. I could have done everything in one uh, sketch, the face, but it would have been very difficult to go in there and digest what's going on in there. So I made the mouth in, a, in its own sketch. And if I hide the body, you can see it's just a square, a central, uh, a midpoint constrained uh, line with a construction enabled. So it's a, uh, it's a construction line. All right, so to build this, there are several tools that can create curves. There's the spline tool, but that doesn't really help too much here. There's some arc tools as well. If you go under sketch, you can see there's an assortment of arc tools. Now I did originally use the three point arc tool, but I, I think I found a better tool. It's called the conic curve. So the conic curve allows you to make uh, some really flexible curves. Um, for, for this example, it worked really well uh, for the mouth. So I'll show you real quick kind of how it works. So you need two points and then your third point is going to be a curve. So I'm gonna go from here and then from here. And then when I move my cursor over, you can see I can kind of create this curve uh, with another point. Uh, you, you, you might notice that, hey, it doesn't look as curvy as the mouth does. Well, that's because once you click on it, then you can apply uh, a row value, which is the curvature of it. So you can see here I'm manipulating it. This is the, the fourth click here, or the third click. So I'm going to put, um, you can round it off to like 0.3, hit OK. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can actually modify this again. So I can double click on it, and this uh, row value jumps back up. So I can make it a little bit more curvy. Right, that's really nice. This dot over here allows you to kind of change the angle of the curvature, which is pretty nice. Uh, so you can work with this nicely. The next thing I did was instead of making another one of these, I just clicked on it, hit O for offset. Now I can offset this sketch and maybe make it negative five. It is a sketch dimension, so I can always update this if I ever needed to. The next thing I want to talk about is how you can use the line tool to make curves. So uh, if you make lines like this, you might say like, well, that doesn't make curves, but here's a, here's a cool thing. If I bring up the line tool 
and then I click on that point and hold down the left mouse button. As soon as I start dragging out while I'm, while I'm clicking and holding, I can create a curve. So this is a cool way to kind of create a curve either this way or this way. So it's Fusion smart enough to kind of change the orientation depending on where your mouse is. So I'm going to close it just by clicking on, but by letting go right there. So let's try it again. I recommend playing with it. It took me a little bit to, to get uh, familiar with the behavior, but it's that simple. So I can come in here and modify uh, the curvature still if I want it even more curvy. I could do that, or if I want it less curvy, I can still do that. So I think this is a really neat way uh, to make uh, some features that look like a Cheeto or, or a mouth in this case. So it's pretty cool. I, I like the Conic Curve tool. I will be using it in future projects. If I ever need to make a shape like that, I know how to do it now. So that's cool. So that's how I made Boomy's mouth. The next feature I want to talk about is Boomy's lightning bolt. It's the signature lightning bolt on his face here. So I'll go to the sketch here. The lightning bolt is its own sketch. And over here, I actually have a little um, doodle that I wanted to to show you guys. So I'll, I'll actually double click on that and kind of delete it. So to create something with this many lines, it's pretty straightforward, but when you're building it, I recommend you just build it, get the lines in there and then refine it later. It's very important to kind of do it that way. So we, I referenced the SVG as closely as I could. You can kind of see how, uh, if, as you move your mouse over, you can kind of get an idea of how many points you need and how many angles you need. So, when you're building something like that and you're referencing something, just kind of just kind of build it out and it doesn't matter if it's exactly the right shape as long as you have all the right, um, like that I just kind of messed up. If you have the right um, amount of uh, lines and the right um, points, then you should be able to do it. So uh, the, the next step I wanna show is kind of uh, dealing with cons uh, constraints. Uh, when I was first building this, um, I got some weird behaviors where things weren't ac actually working. Right now, it's actually pretty good. I have some degrees of freedom. But if you ever find yourself uh, where, where something's not quite working out, you may need to just delete uh, some constraints. Fusion tries its best to make constraints. Uh, but if you found that they aren't working, just click on the icon and delete them. It doesn't do any harm because you can always add more to them. So uh, that's kind of how I built this. Um, and then you can start applying your sketch dimensions. So for example, angles. If you haven't done angles yet, um, it's just picking two lines that are perpendicular with each other. So for example, this one. So I'll click on that, hit D on my keyboard for dimension, click on that, and now I can add a dimension. And if you want things to be nice and, horizontal, uh, nice and straight like this one, it's not quite straight. I can quickly do that by selecting it so it's highlighted and then using one of these constraints here called horizontal slash vertical. So click on that and it'll make it nice and straight. Another thing you could do is if you want to say, I need this to be the exact same as that, we can do that with an equal uh, constraint. So let me click over here just to deselect everything. Click on the equal. I want that to be equal with this and it, it'll do it, but not really. It did it, <laughs> it kind of did it. Maybe it's doing its position. So I still have to apply yet another constraint vertical. Sometimes it'll do it nice. So that's just a quick look at uh, building the lightning bolt. Okay, the next feature I wanna talk about is uh, the little tweeters uh, over here on, on top right here. To make this shape, it's uh, pretty straightforward, but I wanna talk a little bit about the trimming tool. So I'm gonna go uh, to the here, I have it called tweeter. I go inside there. And I'm basically gonna remake this shape here to show you guys uh, how to use the trimming tool for sketches. So this is made up of just rectangles and circles. So I started off with a circle like this, using the circle tool. And then I made a square around it, something like that. Then what I did was I added more rectangles like this. Now, let's say this is all nice and perfect and everything's all nice and um, in the centered. The problem with this is that uh, if I wanted to just extrude uh, this kind of shape here, notice how many times I have to click because all the lines are intersecting with each other. Uh, a, a kind of easier way to do this so that you can just select one profile 
is to just trim away any excess uh, lines. So you can find trim under sketch, it's called trim, or you can use the hotkey T, which I like using a lot, so T. When you roll over a edge, uh, it'll, get, it'll turn red, letting you know that that is the edge that has been detected and that you can delete. So in this case, I'm gonna delete this, these guys here, even these curves, so I can delete this. Now you're gonna notice some warnings here, and these are just saying that some dimensions or constraints have been removed, uh, which is okay in this case, so make sure you kinda flesh out your dimensions before you start trimming. So that's another tip there. But as you can see here, now I have, just with a couple trims, now I have something a lot easier to select when I need to extrude it. I can just do that, and that's kind of how I built this guy here. You might It might kind of look like it's being uh, segmented, but that's because there's a lot of uh, sketch constraints and sketch dimensions uh, on here. But that's pretty much it. The tip here is, of course, to use the, the, the trim tool. So very, very helpful. All right, so that's basically all of the things I wanted to talk about. If you guys have any questions or anything um, that I didn't cover in this tutorial, please let me know. You can download Boomi right now uh, and check out the full um, tutorial for this. So over here at the 3D printing section, you can download the STLs here. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see how to animate this as well. That might be interesting. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.